This is an introduction to how to calculate the Gibbs free energy change of a reaction. There are two ways that we can do this. The first is that we can use the Gibbs free energy of formation of the products and reactants for the reaction. So let's say that we want to know this at some temperature besides 298. Then we can sum over the products first and do N times delta G of formation at that temperature for each of the products and then subtract off for each of the reactants N times delta GF at that temperature. These Ns are the stoichiometric coefficients in the reaction. Now, if we need to know delta G of formation, we can keep in mind that delta G is simply delta H minus T delta S. And so we can use the equations, if we have to come up with an expression for delta G of formation, we can use this approach where we know how to find delta H of formation at any given temperature using the heat capacities of the reactants and product. And we also know how to find delta SF at any particular temperature. So you may have to find delta G as a function of temperature in this way. And once you have it, if you have a reaction, you can then calculate the Gibbs free energy of the reaction in this way. You could also find delta G reaction in one other way. If you know the enthalpy of the reaction and the entropy of the reaction. And that's simply like this. Right, so we have sort of method one here where you're using the delta G of formation, which you may get from this approach, or we have method two down here. Now, use the Gibbs free energy of formation. So let's say that we have um, metals which oxidize in a reaction that looks like this. So we have a metal plus oxygen gas forming a metal oxide. And we want to know, will this be spontaneous? So will it occur spontaneously? Right, so we know be from before that this will occur spontaneously if delta G is less than zero. We will see later on that this depends on the oxygen partial pressure. So basically it depends on how much O2 we have available on whether or not the reaction will move in this direction or if the oxide will decompose and the reaction will move in this direction. It turns out that uh, this system will be in equilibrium. So the metal, the oxygen, and the metal oxide will be in equilibrium when delta G for the reaction is equal to RT ln of PO2. So depending on the oxygen partial pressure uh, and the temperature, that sort of sets the equilibrium. So this reaction has some known value of delta G at this temperature, and this equation lets us find out what oxygen partial pressure makes the system be in equilibrium. And if the oxygen partial pressure is higher, more oxide forms. If the oxygen partial pressure is lower, then the oxide decomposes. Oops, then the oxide decomposes. So we could, if we had more than one metal available also, we could think about which oxide would form first. 
So let's consider a plot here that shows delta G as a function of T. And let's assume that we have a couple of different uh, reactions going on. So we have A plus O2 forming AO2, or we have, um, let's say, B plus one half O2 forming B. Oh, so because this reaction here has the lower delta G, and I should say that this going down here, this is more negative. This one has is more negative, so this oxidation reaction is more likely to occur than this one here. So if we can calculate delta G of formation or delta G of the reaction as a function of temperature, like I'm showing here, one useful thing about that is that it will both let us to determine which oxide is more likely to form, and also the oxygen partial pressure where we would expect to see oxidation.